One of my great heroes was a man called Malcolm Muggeridge. In the early days of my conversion, I started to read Muggeridge because he was a brilliant user of language in a way I had never read anybody else. Muggeridge himself was a late comer to Jesus Christ, possibly the greatest British journalist of the 20th century, a toss up between him and G.K. Chesterton, both of them who ended up becoming moralist philosophers. I had the privilege of being with Muggeridge just nine months before he died at his home in England and spending one of the finest afternoons I'd ever spent in my life as he talked of his younger days and his own wanderings and we talked about the incident I'm now going to mention to you. When he was a young professor of journalism in India, he loved the Indian people. He stepped out of his quarters one morning and went into the river to swim. And as he was swimming at dawn, way out in the distance, he saw the silhouetted figure of a woman getting into the river far away from him. And he was a lustful type of individual. He decided he would make a go for her. Started to swim in, his dire in her direction, and he said in his heart there was a voice telling him, no, don't, no, don't. But he said, I smothered that voice and swam as hard as I could in her direction. And as I came closer and closer, the woman herself, of course, probably by this point, stunned that someone was invading her privacy, especially as she saw a white man emerge from the waters. And as he shook the water off his face, all he could see was a woman covering herself like that. And he said, I was shocked that I was looking into the face and the body of a woman with leprosy. Her fingers were gone. Her nostrils were gone. Her lips were gone. Her eyes looked almost like a gargoyle peering out of a wall somewhere. And Muggeridge said, I was on the verge of saying, what a horrible, ugly woman. Till he said, I paused and realized, no, I've got this wrong. It wasn't a horrible, ugly woman. It was this horrible, ugly heart with which I was living. Take the whole issue of pornography today, making its billions with supposedly the most beautiful human beings on the face of the earth, stirring up within you the ugliest passions you can ever have. Passions that no human being can ever fulfill. No human being can ever fulfill because it takes away the possibility of the impact of a person and puts in its place a feeling, a desire as a supreme pursuit to which you go, which no person can ultimately satisfy. That's what the Bible talks about. Lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, pride of life. Jesus describes your heart and mine perfectly when he says the heart is sinful and desperately wicked above all things. Do you know when the philosopher Nietzsche in 1900 before he died at the age of 54 said God is dead in the 19th century and then he went on to say a universal madness will break out in the 20th century and the 20th century will become the bloodiest century in history. He made the pronouncement, both of which took place. He took the first step in the last 13 years of his life he spent insane. And in the 20th century, we killed more people on the battlefield than the previous 19 put together. And the weapons of warfare are piling up. Take a look at your heart. You know why? On the day you see your heart is desperately wicked in need of a savior, you could become an answer rather than just another question. The description of my condition, the provision for my malady. This is the only answer in the world that offers you a savior. 